Hi folks and welcome to the Meaningful Money Podcast. This is session number 430 and a little bit different today. Uh, the episode is going to be a lot less structured than normal. No theme music even, right? Some of you won't miss that, <laughs> judging by some of the comments that I get about it. But I want to look at where Meaningful Money has come, what's going on right now, where I want to take it. So I guess you could call this a kind of state of the nation speech for your favorite financial education channel. So uh, it should be fun. It's going on both the podcast feed and also on YouTube. Um, but before we get into any of it, just remember, as ever, this podcast continues to be brought to you with the help of my friends at Seven Investment Management, who have helped me out here on Meaningful Money for ages, more than 10 years, actually. So do check out what they're up to. They're at 7im.co.uk and a little bit more about Seven Investment Management later on. Also, let me just mention that the Meaningful Academy Retirement Planning launch is on right now, and there's not that long left, okay? From now until 10 p.m. on Sunday, the 25th of July, just a few days from now, the third and final phase of Meaningful Academy called Retirement Planning is open at a special launch discount. Initial response has been amazing, so thank you to everybody who has joined and said such kind things over the last few days. Head over to MeaningfulAcademy.com. Everything you need is there. Click on the uh, Retirement Planning button when you get to the homepage. Find out all about the launch don't miss out. Seriously, the discount uh, for the launch period is massive and it ends at 10 p.m. on Sunday, the 25th of July, 2021, just in case you're watching this, uh, you know, next year or something. Okay, there's no downloads or anything for this episode, but if you want to leave questions or comments, you can do that at the show notes, meaningfulmoney.tv slash session 430. And also, obviously, you can hit me up on all the usual social channels. Now, where have we come? Well, I shot the first video in 2009, shot it down at the prom in Penzance, uh, really early in the morning when I hoped nobody would be around. Uh, actually, all the uh, nutcase sea swimmers <laughs> were all around there, so it wasn't quite so private as I expected. But I posted uh, the first video, I think actually in April 2010, and actually went live to the public, really told everybody what I was properly doing in July uh, 2010. So it's 11 years ago now. Started doing the podcast in 2012 and switched to a seasons format. Well, I did the podcast and messed around with it for about six months and then decided from May 2013 I needed to do it every week without fail. And that's pretty much what I've done ever since. Switched to seasons in July 2016. It's five years ago now. Moved to a seasons-based format so we could go a little bit deeper on you know one big subject over a few weeks. And that was definitely and has been the right move. Since season 13, uh, I've been working with uh, a great friend called Kawayan, who's uh, become a great mate. He's over in Bulgaria. He's in no small measure responsible to, for what we've done since then. Okay, what a massive difference he has made. A little bit more about him later on as well. So in the recent few months, I've sort of started to have the idea coalesce that essentially there are three tiers to what I spend my time doing. There's the free tier, which is podcast and the YouTube channel. There's the, call it the one-to-many tier, the academy really, so where I can be much more distilled and do sort of teaching in a more uh, focused kind of way. And then at the top tier, if you like, there's the Jackson's Wealth tier, my regulated financial planning practice where I can help people one-on-one. -on -one. So three tiers, free tier, academy, and then Jackson's. So let's look at each one of those uh, one at a time. So the free tier, we're at 430 podcast episodes. This is number 430. I got my numbering wrong, actually, <laughs> earlier on in uh, the in-between episodes we've just done. Um, or in season 19, can't remember. So I've got the numbering a bit wrong, but it's fine. Uh, 430 is, I believe, correct. Uh, nearly four and three quarter million downloads. Download numbers around about 75,000 a month now. Used to be higher than that, but I used to release twice a week into the podcast feed when I was doing Five Minute Friday, you might remember. So since then, uh, numbers have dropped back to around about 75,000 pound, uh, pounds, 75,000 downloads a month on average. Incidentally, would you like to see 5 Minute Friday come back? Let me know if you would. Uh, by the way, do you like my sign? Pretty, isn't it? Huh. Um, the YouTube channel is up to 
13,400 subscribers now, well over 500 videos on there. It's hilarious, really. I look at some you know, YouTube channels that have been going like nine months and they've already got eight times as many subscribers as I have and I've been going for 11 years. But I've never really focused on YouTube properly. Uh, you know, for a few seasons, I just videoed the podcast. That definitely helped to build the channel. But a 30 minute podcast, you know, headshot, piece to camera like this, isn't really YouTube friendly content, he says, putting this episode up. So I want to try some new stuff on YouTube. We have been doing different editing styles, a little bit of shorts, maybe. I mean, lots of fun doing that. I mean, some people really are crushing it on YouTube. Uh, my friend Ken and Mary, the uh, humble penny, um, Jennifer Kempson from Mama for Fur, they're doing great uh, work on there and building big channels. Uh, and I feel like I am sort of want to catch them up. But I feel there's real potential for meaningful money on YouTube. Uh, my good friend, uh, Lynn Beatty, Mrs. Mummy Penny, challenged me actually last week and said, why put all the effort into YouTube? It seems like the return on investment uh, isn't there. And she's absolutely right to ask that question. My response was that I love YouTube. I just love making video. It's my first love, really. Uh, the podcast has definitely been the breakaway medium for Meaningful Money. It's the thing that has sort of shot us into the next level that I never could have expected. But I'm not going to stop doing the podcast, but I adore YouTube. And I really want to do more video. You know, and there's all the stuff that goes with it, like giveaways and worksheets and calculators and all that sort of stuff. There's a ton more that I want to do uh, in the podcast and the YouTube. Lots going on there. Then there's the middle tier, the academy, and that's really been the big project for the last two years. So the academy is a, a specialist course site. It's a membership site, really. You get access to sort of much more distilled knowledge in each of three phases. We've got financial foundations, which, as you'd expect, is the basics of money management. So uh, budgeting, debt elimination, uh, the sort of fundamentals of investing and, and protection, things like that, building an emergency fund. Then you've got Build Wealth, which, as the name suggests, you know, we like to name these things literally. Uh, you know, uh, Build Wealth is about uh, building wealth for the future, investing intelligently, understanding uh, behavioral finance, how you can uh, really hamstring your financial progress because of bad decisions, uh, when and how you should change and uh, switch up your protection program, all that sort of stuff. That's in Build Wealth. And then uh, we just launched Retirement Planning. Uh, we did a founders launch back in January 2021. Now we've done the uh, launch launch, if you like. Um, and take up of the academy is absolutely miles uh, exceeded what we expected. There's over 800 members in the academy now. And feedback is generally really, really great. So yes, the retirement planning launch is on now. But after that, it's really a cycle of reviewing and updating the content. I think it was the right decision to go for a one-off cost for lifetime membership rather than a sort of monthly subscription. There's a lot more to keep up with if people are paying you monthly, okay? Whereas a one-off cost for a, a, a set of content might not seem like a great business model, but actually it takes a lot of pressure off me, which is, which is quite good. So because of the academy, because of the success of the academy, I've been able to add to the team, you know, for eight years, Meaningful Money was me. <laughs> it was Meaningful Money. Whereas now, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Kawayan, uh, known to me as Cal, uh, from season 13 has been helping me with everything from editing, video and audio, to uh, social media messaging, to uh, building the academy, to planning the launches, all that sort of stuff. He has very much become uh, much more than just a freelancer who helps me. He's uh, become a partner in the business, really. Then we've got Nick, who many of you have had uh, conversations with. He's uh, an amazing moderator uh, in the uh, general sort of Meaningful Money community on Facebook, also moderates the uh, three Academy Facebook groups, does an amazing job at responding to email, helps me with a lot of the general admin, which just takes so much time, and Nick's doing that. Uh, Gudrun, who does a lot of the writing uh, for me, um, and quite a lot more besides, actually, one of my sort of biggest cheerleaders. She's uh, amazing and uh, has helped repurpose a lot of the podcast content into other formats. And very soon, I'm going to be adding uh, my good friend, Roger Weeks, who's going to be um, helping in the academy on a sort of technical basis. Uh, as in finance technical, you know, he didn't know one end of a website from another, but he does know pensions and stuff. <laughs> 
So I'm going to be adding more content into the academy. Uh, Voyant Go continues to get better and better as they develop it. And so I'm always having to update videos and stuff like that. So tons going on in the academy. And then we've got the top tier, Jackson's Wealth Management, which is where I give one-on-one -on -one regulated financial advice. Uh, in Jackson's, we are busier than ever. Uh, we are having a record year in 2021 by some considerable margin. I'm currently running a waiting list of clients wanting to work with me, thanks to Meaningful Money. I'm trying to manage retirement, so I've got two of my, uh, well, one of my business partners retiring imminently, and you know we're starting to think about when <laughs> my other business partner might retire a few years down the line. Planning for that uh, takes a lot of work. There's a lot of personnel, uh, as well as cultural things that come with a change of management. So I've got to take on advisors, right? Because, you know, I don't really want to run a waiting list. I want to be able to serve as many people as I can. So I've tried to take on advisors, ones particularly that I can mold into my image, if you like, into my way of doing things, uh, because I have a dim view of a lot of financial advisors. Um, there's tons of fantastic advisors in the country um, and lots of bad ones as well. Um, and obviously, if somebody's going to be working for me, I want them to essentially be me and advise in the same way as I would. But I want Jackson's to be the sort of premier offering at a premium price. Uh, financial advice cannot be cheap in this country because of the weight of regulation. So uh, much as I would like to be able to advise everybody, you know, even if you've just got 20,000 quid to put into an ISA, it's just not profitable to do that, which is part of the reason why I took the uh, step to set up the academy. I'm basically trying to make myself redundant from Jackson's as well. So all uh, I do is maybe just advise a few key clients, run the business, gives me more time to do things like this, shoot videos. So that's where we are. That's where we've been. Uh, this is still a sideline for me, right? This is still <laughs> not my day job. So I get asked all the time, how do you get everything done? The answer is I look for the time to do it and I plan carefully. Um, but it is hard work, no question about that. But anyway, what's coming up? Well, uh, season 20 of the podcast is going to begin in a couple of weeks' time. And it's going to be a season of interviews, right? So I'm going to get some key people on uh, and to talk really about their one big thing. That's what the season is going to be called. Really interesting folks lined up um, and really don't want to shy away from some potentially tricky subjects. With the podcast, I do sometimes wonder how many different ways I can say the same stuff, right? But I do still surprise myself, actually, having said that. I plan to stick with the season's format. Uh, pretty sure I do anyway. Um, I am considering finding a co-host. Uh, that's difficult, okay? Finding somebody that I can really bounce off and uh, I don't want just like a stooge, <laughs> you know, just somebody who's there for the sake of it. I want somebody I can really bounce off. I have some ideas on that. Um, but somebody who could sort of tee me up with questions and then I can riff on, that's what, I'm, that's what I think I'm good at. You know, I talk for a living. Writing is great. I love writing. All my podcasts are scripted long form, except for the interview shows. Um, but it takes up an awful lot of time. One of my sort of podcast heroes is Michael Hyatt. And his podcast has evolved several times over the 15 years or whatever. It might not be that long, 10 years perhaps that he's been doing it. And I feel like Meaningful Money is right for some kind of evolution as well. And so by doing season 20, which will be a bunch of interviews, that means I don't have to write. That will give me the space to work some of these sort of uh, fairly embryonic ideas out. As far as YouTube is concerned, there's tons more I want to do. Uh, YouTube is obviously best for shorter videos, less than 10 minutes ideally. Uh, key inspirations for me on YouTube are Ali Abdal, who is a British, he's a doctor, junior doctor, um, but does amazing work talking about productivity and sort of note taking, all that sort of stuff. Um, sorry about the very noisy road. Whose idea was it to build a studio on a main road? Anyway, so uh, Ali Abdal is great. He talks about, yeah, but productivity, note taking, um, lots more besides. But I like the way he does it. Peter Lindgren, uh, Lindgren is uh, a Swedish filmmaker, 
thousand subscribers to his channel and it's his second language. I love the way he does it. I love the, the way he comes across um, and the way he shares his life in a channel about filmmaking. It's, it's, it's very cool. I, I've, uh, I'll put links to both of those channels under the video here. But I'm looking for ways to sort of increase engagement on YouTube without resorting to the crap that there is uh, on that uh, platform, you know, clickbait titles. Um, and I still have to be careful about what I say because I'm a regulated advisor, so I can't just say whatever I want on YouTube. I want to do vlogs. You know, they're such good fun, really time consuming to edit. Um, but I'd love to do more of that. I have the kit. I just don't use it enough. Um, I want to talk more about sort of lessons learned from 20 odd years of doing my job. Uh, obviously, there's a lot to be said for telling your own story. And I definitely want to do that. But also, I've worked with countless clients over the years and can help tell some of their stories and the lessons to pull from that. So uh, lots more to come on YouTube, I think. Uh, there's definitely another book in me now that the Academy is sort of over the hump, if you like, I'm wondering about writing another book. I'd love to write on planning and executing the perfect retirement. Uh, I've also got another idea for a book about sort of building step by step, layer by layer, you know, the stuff you need to do first and then, and then do this and then that maybe trigger points for reviews along the way, essentially the financial timeline. That's what I'd like to write about as well. So book ideas, maybe. As far as the Academy is concerned, I'm going to be reviewing the content in there, particularly in Foundations and Build Wealth, because, you know, I've spent so much time in the last six months, uh, nine months really, doing the retirement planning stuff. Need to go back and just make sure things are reviewed and now uh, have a regular review program, updating the videos as necessary. Going to be bringing in Roger, my good friend Roger Weeks, as a sort of technical specialist in there to, to help answer the finance technical questions. Definitely going to be more consistent with the live Q&As. Those are now scheduled in at the same time every month. I would quite like to have the site potentially redesigned as well. That's something I'm thinking about, but I haven't decided on yet. At Jackson's, there's just so much to do here, right? It's a thriving practice. Uh, you know, most people will be satisfied with just running a really <laughs> thriving, successful business. Um, but I have two. Uh, so I've taken on a practice manager who starts in September here at Jackson's. She's going to be a massive help. I've got a big vision for what, I, for what I want Jackson's to be. As I said, retiring off my partners is a big step. But then I will be the prime mover at, at Jackson's, which is exciting. And that should all happen before I'm 50, which is amazing. Um, I want to grow it. I want to grow Jackson's, but not too much. I want to look into developing the way we give advice remotely. You know, most advisors were surprised and had to learn how to do remote advice when COVID hit. I've been advising clients over Skype and Zoom for 10 years. So it wasn't a surprise to me, but it's something that I think I can get even better at. And crucially, I want to build um, an investment approach, which is super low cost inside Jackson's. Okay, we we do we practice what I preach here on the podcast anyway, but I want to take that even further. So there's lots to come at Jackson's as well. I said I'd mention Seven IM again. Seven IM have been sponsoring me since the spring of 2011, so basically just over 10 years. I made a call after doing a hundred videos to uh, one of the co-founders of Seven IM. Uh, friend of the show and frequent guest, Justin Urquhart Stewart, he with the red braces, you may remember. Um, I called Justin and said, look, Justin, I'm doing some videos. They seem to be going down pretty well. How about you help me out with a sponsorship and I can buy some equipment and get better? And incredibly, <laughs> he said yes, much to my surprise. Um, it's fair to say I could not have grown Meaningful Money to what it is without them. Um, but I have now ended my sponsorship relationship with them. Uh, my initiative, although I think perhaps they may have uh, ended it themselves this year, but um, it feels like it's time to cut those strings. Meaningful Money is a business in its own right. For years, I didn't make any money here in Meaningful Money, and the only income was 7IM sponsorship. Um, but it isn't a hobby anymore. It's a business in its own right. The sponsorship money was a very small fraction, actually, of total income into Meaningful Money last year. And obviously, with a exclusive sponsorship agreement, which it's always been, that does limit me somewhat. So just going to be looking into 
how that might work going forward, whether I take on other sponsors or whether I don't bother. Uh, lots to think about there, but let me just say it one more time. Massive, massive thanks to Seven Investment Management for sponsoring the show. That deal actually carries on until the end of August, so you'll hear me mention them a few times yet. And then just finally, personally, uh, many of you will know that I've um, struggled for the last year or so with a weird kind of chronic fatigue. Um, fairly low grade compared to what a lot of people uh, endure, but my doctors have now said that it's long COVID, would you believe? I'm still not 100% sure I agree with them because <laughs> most people I have long COVID had pretty nasty COVID symptoms. I've had none at all. I would have said that I've never had it. Um, but it may be that I picked it up or I had some exposure to the virus back very early on, maybe February uh, 2020, uh, when, you know, pre-lockdown, before when we were still, uh, you know, mixing together, went to a couple of events uh, up country, and um, maybe I picked it up then, I don't know. But um, I have to be really careful with uh, my energy levels and listen to my body and not push too hard because if I do, I will just crash and then I'm no good to anybody. Um, so I'm just aware of that, but I'm definitely getting better, which is great, and uh, just need to sort of pursue that carefully. Uh, more mindfulness, that's something that I learned when I really crashed uh, in May 2020, May June 2020, had my first ever time off sick uh, from Jackson's only a week and a half, um, but just needed to crash. And one of the things that I learned uh, through that was to just be more mindful, take more time out for myself, um, create space to just do nothing sometimes, be outside, all that good stuff. So definitely planning more of that. I'm planning to write and record more music. It's something that I haven't done in years. I have the kit and just never find the time to use it. So uh, Definitely something I want to do, write some more songs and record some more music and definitely chill a bit, but still driven, right? Lots that I still want to do. So exciting times, folks. We've come a long way. I mean, it's unbelievable, really, how far we've come from, gosh, that first video or those first hundred videos, really, which was, you know, you can't say, I tell you what, hang on, I'll get it. Here it is. from this camera, <laughs> this little flip video camera, not this bit at the bottom, but just this bit here was the first camera that I ever used. And it's come a long way from that to the kit that I'm now using with fancy lights and signs and all this sort of stuff. Um, sometimes I hanker back for the simplicity of that camera and just wedging it on top of a gate or somewhere and talking to it. But um, I'm having great fun playing with all this kit as well. So tons more to come. Um, and I just want to say thank you. So thank you to everybody who listens to this podcast, watches this YouTube channel. Thank you to everybody who's bought into the Academy and who will do so in the coming days and weeks. Thank you to everyone who has read the book or listened to the audio book. Thank you to the seven and a half thousand of you who get the meaningful digest email every Friday. Thanks to everyone who hits reply to that email. I read them all and reply to as many as I can. Thank you to everybody who's left a review. Uh, or rating of the podcast. And thank you to you. Yes, I'm looking down the barrel of the lens, <laughs> speaking very uh, seductively into the microphone, uh, just to say massive thank you to you for all your support. One thing, in fact, the thing I am most proud of in Meaningful Money is the community that we've built together. Um, not just the, the uh, Facebook community, that's what I sort of tend to refer to as the community, uh, which is the best place on Facebook, right? In the cesspool of internet groups. The Meaningful Money community on Facebook is supportive. It's kind. People are helpful. They want the best for each other. There's no question too small, too daft or anything. Um, I'm super proud of that. Um, so thank you again to Nick and to Ruth, the moderators in there. Um, need to find another couple of mods to help those guys out because they work very hard in that, in that community. Um, but, you know, the community that we've built around uh, this whole project of Meaningful Money is a source of great pride and massive gratitude uh, for me. So thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm going to be taking a couple of weeks off to consolidate things after the sort of franticness of the Meaningful Academy retirement planning launch. Podcast will be back on the 11th of August uh, with the first episode of season 20. So thank you again. That's it for today. Just a bit of a 
talk to the camera, no real script, just some prompts uh, to sort of keep me on track. But hope you enjoyed it. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Cheers.